What is up, everybody? And welcome to the final event of day six of TBRCon 2023. We're going to close out with an author reading, but joining me today is none other than my fan, uh, SFF addicts co host, MJ Kuhn. How are you, MJ? Hello, hello. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. It's been a long week, but it's been good. And I'm uh, going to say, you've been busy. I'm really this happy, week. though. I'm really happy with how everything's going. <laughs> yeah, it was going great. Yeah. Little hiccups here and there, but uh, just rolling with the punches, and I'm uh, very excited because today MJ is going to be reading from her next book, which is Thick as Thieves, which is the sequel to Among Thieves, her debut novel. So I'm very, very excited, and for all of you to hear a little, a little taste of Thick as Thieves. So for anyone who doesn't know you, can you tell them a bit about yourself? Yeah, well, for starters, if you hear purring, there is a cat on my lap. Um, <laughs> he jumped up here like right before it started. Um, so yeah, um, my name is MJ Kuhn. I am a fantasy writer, um, big fantasy fan. My cat's name is Thorin Oakenshield. That is right here, in mm -hmm. case that's any indication. Um, also co-host of SFF Addict with the uh, wonderful Adrian here. Um, but yeah, so my debut uh, novel among thieves came out in september of 2021 and thick as thieves which i will be reading a little snippet from today um comes out this coming july so july 25th of 2023 oh, i love it and uh for anyone who hasn't read among thieves can you give a little sense of that book and the world that it takes place in yeah so among thieves it's a fantasy heist story um so six thieves are teaming up to steal a magical artifact, but every single member of our heist team is secretly planning to screw over the whole rest of the crew. Um, so it's kind of set in this like gritty setting. Uh, and there's a lot of betrayals, um, very character driven story. Um, and yeah, the magic system is pretty dark. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> You're selling your book pretty damn well, huh? Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Feel like, well, okay, so I, I have comped it. So for folks that don't read a lot in the like fantasy heist crossover genre, I'll comp it as like I'm, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll comp it as like Game of Thrones meets Ocean's Eleven. Um, but for folks that you know do read a lot in the genre, um, you know, it's directly inspired by the lies of Block Lamora, um, is what made me want to write this book. So um, if you liked The Lies of Locke Lamora, my publisher has also comped it to Six of Crows, um, though it is in the adult market, not YA. Um, but uh, yeah, so if that's kind of your jam, you might want to check it out. Yeah. And uh, Foundry Side by Robert Jackson. Yes. Is another one that's very similar there. But uh, <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you love about thieves and rogues and all those scoundrels and, and morally gray folk? Yeah, they're just so fun to write. And I feel like it's just a fun headspace to sit in. Um, and I think that writing in that kind of morally gray space is particularly great in um, fantasy and sci-fi because you are writing in a world that is not necessarily a direct, you know, comparison to our own world. So mm -hmm. I feel like it makes it a little easier as a reader, at least it makes it easier for me to accept a character that's like acting in ways I wouldn't act uh, yeah. because they live in a world I don't live in. Um, and I feel like that kind of gives us a little more room to explore some kind of darker themes. Um, so yeah, there are some darker themes in Among Thieves, but it is also, I feel like with rogues and thieves, you can make them a little snarky. You can make them a little sassy. Um, there's yeah. a lot of, um, you know, sniping and banter going on um, in the story. So, um, you know, you can kind of lighten up all that darkness with a little bit of comedy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, David Walters is in the chat. Hey, buddy. He's saying morally gray hey. is where all the cool kids hang out. And I completely agree. I mean, I agree. I'm a little <laughs> biased. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I'm a cool kid. <laughs> right? I want to be a cool kid. Can I play? <laughs> I'm, I'm morally gray. Right? Come on. <laughs> all right. Awesome. And, um, so you tell us a little bit about, you told us a little bit about Among Thieves, but how does Thick as Thieves kind of play into things? And just for folks out there who uh, uh, don't know, this is a duology. So you can start and finish this series this yes, July. Yeah, it will so not can you tell be folks ongoing and never finished. I promise you. 
Um, yeah, so it's a duology. It's uh, Thick as Thieves follows um, the the crew from Among Thieves on, on their next gig, basically, their next job. Um, there's a lot more shifting loyalties still. Um, I introduce a few new characters um, that are a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it, it does end. The story does end. We get a satisfying conclusion. I hope satisfying at least uh, at the end of this story. Um, so you won't be, you know, stuck waiting on another cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, all those all those people that were bitching about Among Thieves ending on a cliffhanger. The sequel wasn't confirmed yet. But I it know, had but that's written. what I say. In their defense, it didn't end on a cliffhanger and it was billed as a standalone. So it was like, what? That's just um, publishing bullshit. Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> it was always meant to be a duology. It just took me a little while to uh, get the sequel confirmed. Um, but yeah, it's been written for since before Among Thieves even came out. So um, it's been ready to go for you guys for a while. <laughs> you all shall be satisfied. And uh, MJ is going to be doing a reading. And then afterwards, we'll do a little bit of a Q&A. We're going to do some uh, chit chat. And can you tell people which section of the book you chose to read and why you chose that one to showcase Thick as Thieves? Yeah, so I'm going to be reading a, a little snippet from chapter two um, of Thick as Thieves. And I will let you guys know there, <laughs> I tried so hard to find a snippet spoiler. that didn't have a spoiler for, for Among Thieves. <laughs> I, it's, I, I, it's not possible. Um, so if you haven't read Among Thieves yet, um, tread lightly <laughs> with this reading. Uh, <laughs> there's, <have> been <laughs> there's some spoilers in here for, for Among Thieves. Um, but yeah, I just feel like um, this passage is a good indicator for where the story kind of begins. Um, and sets up what they're the mischief that our our friends are going to get into um in this next story so morally gray mischief love it yes <laughs> well everyone you've been warned spoilers ahead uh for among thieves mj take it away all right and just as a note i'm not an audiobook narrator so i apologize if i flub over any words here all right Tristan Beckett awoke with a start in his tower room as a flash of lightning split the sky outside. Just the storm, he told himself, but as his eyes slitted open, his heart leapt into his throat. There was something outside his window. Not something. Someone. That was impossible. No one could scale the height of the shadow keep, especially not in a storm like this. But his stomach twisted as he recalled one person who could absolutely accomplish such a feat. Someone he cared for more than any other living soul in Timor. Someone he had betrayed and left for dead. Thunder rattled through the night, this time accompanied by the tinkling sound of shattering glass. Tristan gritted his teeth, peering through the darkness of his bedchamber. Another bolt of lightning rent the blackness, revealing a hooded shadow stalking across his fine woven rugs, soaked in rainwater and dripping with mud. Silver throwing axes glinted at her belt. The Butcher of Kerouac. She had come to kill him at last. To be fair, he was surprised to have survived this long anyway. He had fully expected his father to kill him the instant their ship pulled out from <clears throat> the harbor in Kerouac. Instead, he had been locked in the captain's cabin where the worst thing that had happened was that the man who brought him his meals called him Denison. Technically appropriate, since that was his birth-given name. But Tristan didn't feel like Denison. After all, Denison Shadowwood had been a prince, sheltered and coddled, naive in the ways of the world. Tristan Beckett was a card man, a con artist, a pickpocket. As lowly as those things might be, he would rather be any of them than the Prince of Edale. He would rather live in the gutters of Kerouac forever than play son to his monstrous father again. But Tristan Beckett wasn't just a thief. He was also a coward. He hadn't fought when his father had led him back into the Shadow Keep. He was confined to the Western Tower, his every step mirrored by adept and shadow wardens. But his father kept him alive. For what purpose? The summer sun gave way to driving rains of early autumn, and still Tristan was alive. There was no way his father had suddenly had a change of heart. No, there had to be a reason Tristan was still breathing. He just couldn't figure out what it was. But none of that mattered anymore. Raya Catella had come to finish him off. He swallowed, swallowed, clenching his eyes shut again as the butcher tiptoed across the room toward him, like feigning sleep would protect him from facing punishment for his crimes. He flinched despite himself as a wet glove clamped over his mouth to muffle his screams, of course. Any second now, he would feel the cool bite of her hatchets cutting into his flesh. Instead, he felt a gloved, second gloved hand grab his forearm. The rainwater soaked through his nightshirt as the hand shook him roughly. Get your ass up. 
up. Tristan let his eyes flitter open. What? For Felice's sake, did old Tolliver slice your ears off? I'm trying to rescue your traitor's ass. Let's go. Rescue, Tristan said, blinking. Then you're not here to kill me? Raya's gruff chuckle echoed through the darkness. Not this time, but fuck me over again and we'll have to talk. Fair? She reached out to him. Tristan grinned in disbelief, grabbing her hand and letting her pull him to his feet. Fair. All right, now that you're finally up, we can get out of here, Raya said, crossing toward the window. Tristan hurriedly grabbed his dressing gown, belting it on over his nightclothes as he stuffed his feet in the first pair of shoes he could find. You are, you know I can't climb down the side of a tower in this rain, right? Raya tossed a grin over her shoulder, her teeth glinting as a, in a fresh flash of lightning. Because in better weather, you'd skitter down it like a spider, would you? I'd have a better chance of it, at least. Tristan blushed, nodding the laces on his second shoe. Right, well, don't worry, Denison. We're not going out that way. Don't call me that. Raya turned, apparently indifferent to the torrents of rain pouring in through the shattered window. What am I supposed to call you, then? If you say your highness, I might decide I am here to kill you. No, that's not. Tristan started to protest. He shook his head and swallowed. Tristan's fine. He thought Raya would argue, but she just studied him a second, then nodded. Tristan it is. Now, Tristan, you think you can get through this window without cutting yourself to pieces? About that, Tristan tr crossed to the window, wincing as the rain splattered over him. The water was bone cold. How was Raya standing there, soaked without shivering? He grabbed the knob at the window's base and swung it inward. You could have just opened the window, you know, he said. Raya blinked. It's not locked? Tristan raised an eyebrow. It's hundreds of feet in the air, Raya. Why would it be locked? I always forget how incredible I am, Raya said. Her eyes flicked to the chamber door. How many are guarding the hall out there? Tristan shrugged. At least two. Usually shadow wardens. Sometimes it's kinetics, though. Raya's face slipped into a grimace that Tristan understood all too well. The shadow wardens were somber and dangerous, but the adept were something else entirely. Tristan had seen the damage they could do, and with his father controlling all of them, the thought prickled the back of his mind uncomfortably. Control over all the adept in the world should make his father unstoppable. So why had he not yet made his move? Why hadn't he conquered Gildemar? He had the quill. Didn't he? How well do you know the inside of this castle, Raya asked, still eyeing the chamber door. Well enough, he answered hesitantly. Good. Can you get us to the wine cellar? The what? The wine cellar was one of the, one of the last places he wanted to go right now. It was tucked away in the basement, below the keep's kitchens, the farthest point in the keep from this high, rain-soaked tower. He would almost rather try to climb down the walls with cold, numbed fingers than try to navigate their way there. Almost. How exactly will getting to the cellar help us escape, he finally asked. Raya looked him up and down. Let's just say I hope you're not attached to those shoes. Before he could ask her to elaborate, the Butcher of Kerouac disappeared out the window and into the rainy night. Her gloved hand slid back into view, beckoning for him to follow. He peered out the window after her, his dark curls sticking to his forehead as the rain drummed down on him. For Adelina's sake, he muttered. His rescuer was perched on the windowsill, some three inches wide, nothing but open air between her and the ground so far below he couldn't even see it in the darkness. Come on, let's put that dancer's frame to good use, Raya said with a wink. I don't think I can, he started. Then he swallowed, looking back toward the door. His father hadn't done anything besides lock him in a luxurious tower. Yet though he would have to be more foolish than Uyghur the Witless to sit around and wait for that to change. After all, the king had planned to kill him once before. It was the reason Tristan had run off to Kerouac in the first place. If his father had the quill of Declan Day, he wouldn't need to use his heirs of death as pretense to start a war. Still, Tristan knew too much. His father would find a way to silence him eventually. The castle was quiet. The guards outside the door to his chamber hadn't even stirred. The rain and the thunder could cover for them, and Raya had a plan. He was going to get out, and now was his only chance. He took a deep breath and edged out onto the windowsill. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> uh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic ending. I was like, how do I signal to you when I'm done with the reading part? And I figured that was the most professional way to do it. <laughs> In my in my writing critique group with uh, Peter Peter Hartog and Patricia Jackson, Peter ends every reading that any of us do with dun dun dun. And I, I love, love it so, so much. much. <laughs> it just fits, right? It's yeah. appropriate often. Yeah. It's like if you end a chapter well, it deserves a dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> yeah. This is good stuff, though. I'm so excited uh, for this book, and I'm just really curious from your perspective. Now that it's finally coming out, how much relief do you feel? How, how happy are you that it's coming? 
So I'm very happy that it's coming. I feel a lot of relief that it is going to come out and that people will get to read the story. I also feel so much fear. I'm so worried about disappointing people. I really just, I, I'm so appreciative of the love that Among Thieves has gotten. And I just really, really hope that the people that loved that book find as much joy and excitement in the sequel as I did writing it. <laughs> no, me too. Me too. Uh, David's asking, did you ever feel like you were going to have to go the self pub route with Among Thieves? Or with Thick so, as Thieves. Yeah, I was going to say, not with Among Thieves. So with Among Thieves, I was um, very much hell-bent on the trad pub route. Um, and then we just had a, a bit of a challenge getting Thick as Thieves picked up um, from by my publisher, which, you know, it makes sense. They're looking at the numbers. They're trying to make sure that there's enough of an audience to warrant um, a sequel. And then yeah. as all that's going on, I'm seeing, you know, the comments and reviews rolling in of people that are upset that the story doesn't end. Um, and so I I was in talks with my agent at the time about what our options were to mm -hmm. self-publish the sequel because I just wanted to get it to the readers. It was already written um, and I just wanted it to be available for the people who would be looking for it in whatever form that would be. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. If anyone wants to hear more about that, go check out episode 36 where MJ talks about her experiences as a debut author. And uh, <laughs> David said, drinks are fun. <laughs> drinks are always fun. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he said, I mean, they got a sick friggin' cover for you for uh, Thick as Thieves, so clearly something worked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my back. gosh. They got Chris McGrath back, yeah. And I yeah. was so thrilled. Um, and again, like I gave – basically no direction on the cover again and he nailed it out the gate again yeah. <laughs> like, that yeah. beautiful green yep. tone love it i know i love it it's gonna go so well with the blue it's gonna look beautiful on the shelf i can't wait <laughs> how is the how is the uk edition gonna come together is it gonna be that same like sort of neon vibe but just a different kid tbd uh i still have heard nothing about uh anything about the uk edition so yeah. i will post any and all updates on my socials when i have them but um you know publishing <laughs> get on it glance come on uh chris dubois is asking raya raya's character is awesome any chance we'll get more of her backstory in the sequel so I thank you. I love Raya's character as well. I know she's uh, she's been billed as an unlikable main character, which I get. But I'll, also, I she's love her. Just she's just saucy. She's my murder baby. She's the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we do get a little more. We get quite a bit of her backstory in Among Thieves. Um, but we get some more. We get a lot more context um, about the magic system um, in Thick as Thieves and how it comes to be. Uh, and that dovetails into Raya learning some new things about herself um, from one of my new characters that I love so much. And I can't wait to introduce um, all of you to them. <laughs> oh, so exciting. I'm really, really yeah. excited. <laughs> and on that note, I'm, 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 you know, you mentioned elaborating on the magic in the sequel and stuff like that. Um, what other aspects of world building did you get a chance to build upon in Thick as Thieves that you were just like, this is such a cool aspect of Among Thieves, but obviously there needs to be more explanation here. What were some of those things for you? We get to visit um, two kingdoms that we did not get to visit uh, in Among Thieves. Um, one, we, I mean, you just read a, a portion of, of them in, in Edale, um, mm -hmm. but we spend a lot of time in uh, Thick as Thieves in Boreas. Um, so you get uh, a good little taste of the Northern Kingdom um, in this story, which was a lot of fun to write um, because I feel like it was a radically different uh, culture from the culture in Dresdel, which is where they spend mm -hmm. a lot of time uh, in Among Thieves. Um, so it was fun to kind of write that um, contrast for the characters. Yeah. Yeah, right on. And um Another thing that I was curious about, now I'm just kind of like interviewing you because it's like, whatever, you're not my co-host <laughs> or anything like that. No, yeah, it's not like we talk like every <laughs> no, week, it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> um, what was I going to ask? Uh, for all the characters that you've that you've got going on, so it's like you really nailed multiple POV in Among Thieves. Um, are there any characters that you felt like really 
you know, you felt like you stepped up their game in comparison to Among Thieves, where it's just like, oh, they shine so much brighter than they did in the book. Yes. So I heard a lot of um, feedback. Um, This was like before I stopped reading my own reviews, which I don't read my own reviews anymore. (laughs) I, you know, yeah, I know. I know you're not supposed to, but like, you know, I'm just curious to see what people are saying. And like, you know, I'm not going to creep anyone out, but I just wanted to know. (laughs) And, you know, there were some folks saying that they felt like they didn't get enough um, they didn't really feel like they knew Ivan or Nash enough, um, mm-hmm. which is so funny because Nash is uh, not so secretly my favorite character. I'm always like, she's my secret favorite. And I say it in like every interview. So it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> um, but we spend a lot more time with both Nash and Ivan um, in Thick as Thieves. And um, I'm really excited for people to get a little bit more um, inside their heads and and spend a little bit more time with them. So as everyone yeah. just betrays the shit out of each other (laughs) i mean it wouldn't be our little dysfunctional found family if they weren't screwing each other over (laughs) yeah that's what it's all about we're morally gray and we betray each other because you know yeah it's the vibe it's the vibe betrayal vibes (laughs) (laughs) but they're fun they're fun so if anyone watching hasn't read among thieves and are like oh my god these people sound like terrible people they they are they're they're largely terrible people but they're like terrible people with good reason and they're so fun about it <laughs> yeah they like do heists and you know kill people with uh with axes <laughs> and there's they're you know... lovable assholes all right <laughs> <laughs> there we go it's like on one end of the spectrum you have like oceans 11 where everyone's really like suave goofy and, and like, got their stuff like, suave and like heart of gold and whatnot yeah. but then you know you're like playing a middle ground yeah. yeah where it's like it's like likeable every but they're also character shady. is like a more likable version of the guy from the first 10 minutes of the italian job okay <laughs> 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 right? right that's a comp right it. there that's a comp right there <laughs> literally that whole thing like the <laughs> that guy from the first 10 minutes of the <laughs> right yeah. but like just more likable <laughs> yeah i like it awesome well uh mj we will wrap it up there um can you let people know a little bit more about uh, Thick as Thieves. The the release is on July 25th, but what formats can they pick it up in? Is there going to be audiobook or hardcover or what's the deal? Yeah, so it will be, it will not be available in hardcover, unfortunately, um, which womp womp. But, you know, a lot of publishing is going that direction. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a paperback bitch myself, so I'm okay with it. Uh, <laughs> but I've got my hardcover sad. and they're I never... Know. They will That's ne- what they will I never hope. have a partner. That is the part that I'm sad about because I know people like their books to match. And so anyone that has a hardcover, I'm so sorry. You won't be able to get a matching friend. Um, you're lucky you're my it. co-host because I'm... I'm <laughs> right? I'm, Otherwise, you would riot. Betrayed. <laughs> right? I know. I was really <laughs> upset when I first found out, but I've come I've come to terms with it. Uh, but it will be available um obviously also in ebook version and in audiobook so all the other awesome. versions <laughs> well i'm very very excited and for anyone who hasn't read among thieves go check it out it's very fast paced you're gonna have a great time there's a lot of shenanigans and uh violence and swearing and all the stuff that mj <laughs> loves to to play around with so <laughs> i Swearing in real life, yes. The violence, not so much. Don't get me on a list or something here, Adrian. <laughs> She's the butcher of Detroit. No, she she bought axes. So I, do I, have axes. I apologize, to MJ. It's like if any like Detroit police are listening or something, they <laughs> come knocking on my door. That's all right. <laughs> get out of here, coon. <laughs> You're out of here. You're kicked oh. out. And if you enjoy the banter that MJ and I have, it's because we hang out every week uh, on SFF Addicts. So if you want to listen to our podcast, uh, we got interviews and mini master classes with a whole a whole variety whole of bunch authors. Of cool people. We got an episode yeah. coming up on uh, audiobook narration with Travis Baldry. We chatted with Travis uh, for a while. Then we got Chelsea Abdullah and... Uh, a lot of really cool authors coming down the pipeline. Also, H.M. Long, we chatted with her live last Sunday to kick off TBR Con, and she is fantastic. She's um, delightful, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so you can all go check out all that stuff. And uh, MJ, where can people find you on social media? Yeah, uh, you can find me across all the main ones, so TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at MJ Kuhn Books, uh, or just MJ Kuhn.com. 
Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed day six of TBRCon 2023. We got two days left and uh, I'm really appreciative to all of you who've been tuning in and I will see you all tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>